Hello everyone and welcome to a truly spectacular game from round 11 of the 2022 Tata Steel Chess Masters. It's a, a clash between two uh, of the top uh, uh, Dutch Grandmasters, uh, Jordan van Forest and, and Anish Giri. Uh, and it's, uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful game. I'm sure you guys already uh, know that it happened, but let's uh, dive straight into it as there is uh, a lot uh, a lot to discuss. So uh, Jordan with the white piece opens with d4. We have knight to f6, c4, e6, knight to c3, and of course, Bishop to b4. Uh, Anish goes for the Nimzo Indian defense. Uh, and uh, whenever we have the Nimzo on the board, we say that, okay, Queen to c2 and d3 are the uh, two most popular replies. Everyone plays this, and that's what uh, you have to do in modern chess. But here, uh, Jordan plays a3, and this is um, something that's uh, considered a, a little bit inferior uh, in modern chess because now we have access to all of these incredibly strong engines, uh, as it gives black uh, equality, or, or even some say even more. Uh, but what does this mean for human chess? Well, let's see what happens. So, of course, now you can capture on c3 and mess up white's pawn structure a little bit. Uh, after queen to c2, you can't do... Uh, you can't really do that, so okay, B captures on C3, and the immediate B6 here, C5 and B6 are the top moves, uh, Giri goes for B6, because you want to uh, think to your light score bishop, or sometimes you will even play bishop to A6, as now the, the C4 pawn could be considered uh, weak, so maybe we'll just go after it. So here we have F3, white replies to this by creating a massive center with F3, E4, and now knight to C6. Uh, we have E4, grabbing the full center now, uh, and while you could go for bishop to A6 right away, here we have knight to a5 and this is what we discussed the bishop is coming to a6 the knight already attacks the c4 pawn and uh this is what uh, anish will uh, will try so here bishop to d3 and now uh bishop to a6 uh, interestingly the position has been reached in the 2019 saint louis Ra uh, blitz tournament uh, between magnus carlson and levon arunyan where d6 was played uh that the game ended in a draw but here we have bishop to a6 and now comes queen to e2 we have to uh, help defend that c4 pawn and now, again, the position has been reached uh, in 2021 between uh, Dario Alivodic and Teodora Ignac, um, uh, where, where C5 was played. That Teodora was able to win this game. Uh, but in this game, we have D6, and it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. So let's see how Jordan deals with this. He uh, starts with F4, grabbing even more space. Here you can see how much of the uh, squares are covered by those pawns, so that's definitely an un unpleasant pressure for black. Uh, Queen D7, Anish continues development. Uh, uh, is soon ready to castle. The rooks will be nicely connected. We have knight to f3 and queen to a4 now. So really going after that c4 pawn uh, and uh, Jordan defends it. We have knight f to d2, the pawn now nicely defended and now Anish strikes in the center with e5. So what's the idea behind this move? Well, uh, if you just win a pawn here because you can win a pawn, for example, captures, captures and captures, uh, knight to d7 and uh, it's, uh, well, not not a pawn that you, you can really brag about. Uh, we, we can just castle here, for example, castles, ca uh, sorry, castles, castles, and it's a really really bad position for white. The c pawn is doubled. The e pawn is doubled. Um, not not a lot of fun. Uh, white is very much overextended here uh, with everything ha uh, that has to keep an eye on the c4 pawn. So it's just bad. So instead, after e5, we have castles here. Uh, sorry, castles here, uh, and now castles here. So both players castle, we have f captures on e5, d captures on e5, but now rook to b1. Uh, and okay, the rook definitely belongs on the b file, and you have to be a little bit careful. For example, something like six, c6, rook b4, and the queen is trapped. There is no good reason to play c6 here, but uh, again, you have to be very careful. Uh, so instead, of course, c5 is played. You really put pressure on black cent on white center here, but now uh, there is a, a problem for Anish in this position. Uh, by playing c5, he gives a deadly dare to, to Jordan, and uh, well, will he, uh, will he go after it or not? Uh, feel free to pause the video here and try to find the, the absolute best and sneakiest move for white while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this fine idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Rook captures on F6. That's the good stuff, uh, because now when you see it, of course, you uh, immediately believe it. Uh, we're going to give up the exchange to mess up black spawn structure, uh, expose the black king. And now look at white's pieces, queen here, knight here, bishop here, all targeting that c4 pawn when the actual game is being played on the king's side. So uh, that's a bit of a problem here. So G captures on F6, now comes queen F3. 
we want to grab that f6 pawn right away and uh, well th there's just no good way to uh to, uh to go about this if you try something like knight captures on c4 or try to force some sort of a trade here knight captures bishop captures again bishop to h6 and you're getting checkmate at queen g3 check queen g7 checkmate it's uh completely useless so any ideas of, of a game being played on the queen side uh, have to go away and you have to switch all of your attention to the king side now so queen c6 we're gonna defend the df6 pawn and now d5 uh, grab a few more squares uh, so now we're forcing the queen to d6 queen to d6 and now how do you continue this well you have exposed the black king but none of your pieces are actually uh joining the white queen in the attack so we have to uh, free them up somehow so here jordan starts with knight to f1 the always the strong uh, the strongest the most difficult move to find uh is with the knight back some would say and now king to h8 uh we're preparing rook to g8 we're gonna play rook to g6 also bringing the other rook to g8 uh, we, we also might have some attacking chances along the g file so knight e3 of course the knight is now coming to f5 and when this knight lands on f5 you know that you cannot be worse regardless of the exchange sacrificed so bishop to c8 we have to keep an eye on that f5 square and now how do you continue developing well bishop d2 this will allow our rook into the game but also bishop to e1 to h for uh, going after the f6 pawn uh, is the way to go here so rook g8 these are basically the only moves black can play and now comes rook to f1 uh, not right away sorry first bishop to e1 going after that bishop to h4 uh, idea and then we're bringing the rook to f1 so now rook to g6 adding another defender and bishop to h4 we have rook to h6 again now putting pressure on this bishop and queen to f2 so not worrying about anything we're playing rook to f1 and then we'll, we'll take it from there so bishop to d7 uh, now you want to bring the other rook into the game and here rook to f1 and now uh, what do you play here it's a really, really difficult position, and the white is, white is of course, better, but uh, you have to uh, play it in, in incredibly precise. For example, knight to b7 uh, is the is the engine's idea of how you can maybe hold this, but it still looks very ugly. Uh, point is that you never really want to capture on f6. If you capture on f6, black will very happily trade here. Captures, captures, gives back the exchange, and then uh, you, you have this endgame where white, of course, is better, uh, but white will still have to, uh, to prove it. Uh, in, in the actual game, an played king to g7 and this is uh sort of uh d defending against a non-existent threat bishop captures on f6 was never really possible here so in chess terminology it was um, basically a niche seeing ghosts or, or maybe it's not even about defending the pawn maybe you just want to bring the rook to g8 and bring the king over to f8 and then maybe hide the king to the queen side uh regardless of what the case is this is now completely winning for jordan uh, and he of course finds the best idea so what's the best idea you guys already know because we said the knight belongs on f5 if the knight uh, hits the f5 square it's all over for black so we need to take care of the bishop guarding the f5 square so jordan starts with bishop to e2 now bishop to g4 is coming and then uh, well either black will, will capture or we are going to capture the black bishop and then play knight to f5 so here we have rook to g6 taking um, uh, another uh, um, well uh control uh, of that g4 square and now h3 anish does the same uh, but also by playing uh sorry jordan does the same but also by playing h3 he allows this bishop captures an h3 idea as the g pawn is pinned so uh what do you play here uh well giri can basically capture on h3 or he can uh ignore this idea and play something like uh, rook uh, rook to g8 uh but also this is insufficient because let's say bishop h5 and wh where can the rook go to only the h6 square now we play bishop g4 and we still get our um, uh, square for the knight so let's say king f8 we're gonna play bishop captures on d7 queen captures on d7 now bishop captures on f6 and it looks incredibly dangerous for white because the queen can capture on h3 the rook can capture on h3 uh, but it is not enough queen captures on h3 here anish would be threatening mate in one but there's the incredible the only winning move for white here bishop e7 it's not all that difficult to find because it's uh well uh, if you don't play this you're just gonna get checkmated uh so king captures queen captures and now it's black who's getting checkmated let's say king to d8 you're picking up the rook with check king c7 queen to g7 and now the rook is coming to f8 so if you go uh, up the board you're getting checkmated your only other option is to go here but now it's not f5 check and now you have to give up the queen there are no more squares captures captures and now you are getting checkmated very soon
So uh, after h3, uh, although uh, ignoring the h3 pawn is valiant, but it will it would not help you. So here, bishop captures and h3 was played. Uh, you don't have a threat here. The knight here is guarding the g2 pawn, but at least you're preventing the knight from coming to f5, uh, or or maybe you're not because this would also come with a with a royal fork and black will, would have to give up the bishop here. So here we have bishop to h5, just attacking that rook. Uh, you, you, uh, there's no reason to play knight to f5 here because you really want your knight on f5. You don't want the bishop uh, to capture the knight. So bishop to h5, attacking the rook. Uh, now bishop to d7. You can't move the rook because the only square for the rook is h6 and then we can just capture the bishop. So it's a free piece. So bishop back to d7 was played and now, of course, we just captured the rook. Bishop captures on g6, f captures, and now we collect everything. Bishop captures on f6 with check. King to g8 and now queen to h4. Uh, that's the, the the correct idea. You want to play queen to g5. You want to pick up pick up the e5 pawn, and then you will have two connected pass pawns in the center. And even though you could maybe win the game uh, in in another fashion, this is perfectly fine. Now comes rook to f8, and he finally brings this rook into the game, uh, but it doesn't help him all that much. Um, uh, regarding time on the clock, Jordan has some 25 minutes here, and each has some 10 minutes on the clock. But uh, I'm pretty sure uh, uh, Jordan would win this regardless of the time on the clock. And he starts with rook to f three. Uh, you could also just go for this plan, but rook to f3 uh, isn't uh, isn't really ruining your plan. Uh, if anything, if rook captures an f3, you're going to be able to capture with the g pawn, so maybe you even improve your pawn structure. You could also look at it like that. So rook to f7, uh, now preparing queen f8 and now queen g5. There's no defense. You, you cannot defend the e5 pawn. Queen to f8 and now comes queen captures on e5. So now the two pass pawns are monsters. The queen will move and the pawns will start marching. So knight b7. Finally, the knight rejoins the game. So you can see how it's very interesting uh, from the start. Anish put all of the pieces on the queen side going after that doubled c4 pawn, which kind of is a weakness. And that's the idea. Uh, White plays the early a3. We create a weakness then we, we can attack it, uh, but then he allowed this uh, rook captures an f6 um, uh, move and everything just went uh, uh, downwards. So here we have queen to f4, uh, preparing to, to push our pawn, knight to d6, and now just e5. We have knight to e8. Uh, now, okay, uh, if we push, then maybe uh, we can capture an f6, but uh, it doesn't matter, just d7. Uh, sorry, not e6, just uh, d6. Uh, if you play e6 here, you're attacking the bishop and the rook, but there's a rook captures on f6, so that's a bit of a problem. If he captures on d7, we can play rook captures on f4, d8, queen, and now, uh, well, it's just not all that impressive. Rook captures on f3, can be played, we pick up the rook, g captures on f3, knight g7, black uh, is uh, all, all of a sudden back in the game, and it might be even better. So after knight e8, we have d6, this is the correct pawn push, and now, uh, well, you can't simply allow knight to d5 to, d, to e7 check, uh, that would be game over, so we have to eliminate some of the attackers, e captures on f6, and now this is still the idea, there's not much you can do about this, so at least queen e8, once the knight moves we can maybe do some damage with the queen, but not really. Knight to d5 was played, we have queen to e1 check, king to h2, and now queen to d1. This is already move 40, time control has been made, but um, doesn't really change anything. Knight e7 check, king to h8, neither king f8 nor h8 is really helping black, so it doesn't really matter. And here there are a lot of ways you could win this, but Jordan finds the most uh, aesthetically pleasing one, uh, and that of course is rook to h3. Uh, this is what he played uh, on move 42, and it was in this position uh, on move 42 that Anish Giri resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. So what can you play? Uh, well, obviously you could capture the rook, but the problem with this is that now we push the pawn to d7 and we free up this diagonal for a queen to b8 check. And the queen to b8 check always has a special place in my heart ever since, uh, well, uh, ever since the, the, the famous uh, Opera House game. So uh, it's always, uh, you know, if it's possible, uh, everyone thinks about the queen to b8 check and at, at any given position. So here it's uh, also just uh, completely crushing. Uh, queen captures on d7, for example, now queen b8 check and there's no defense you have to play queen c8 and now we pick up the queen with the knight and that's it
Uh, so, uh, of course, that's not possible. Another thing, after rook to h3, you don't have to capture the rook, but what are you going to play? If you try something like queen to g4, white will happily trade captures, for example, bishop captures, and now knight captures on g6, king has to go to g8, knight e7 back check, king f8, and now even rook g3. And now, uh, it's, uh, again, beautiful, the bishop cannot move, because if it moves, a rook to g8 will be checkmate, so you're going to defend the bishop with h5, but now d7, and now you have to decide whether you want to get checkmated with a d8 queen or a rook, or you're going to capture the pawn and then get rook to g8 checkmate. So really, really spectacular. Uh, this was one of the games that we, we had to check uh, all the way to the end, even beyond the point where uh, resignation happened, because that's where uh, uh, also the, the beauty of the game lied, as most of the times the uh, beauty of the game is not uh, uh, you know within the moves played, but rather within the moves that weren't played. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. Big congratulations to Jordan on this spectacular, uh, spectacular uh, achievement. Um, you know, going for a, a, a sort of a suboptimal line against the Nims of this early A3 idea, and then uh, well, completely, completely crushing Anish. Uh, you can see that everything Anish played was something that you should play, you you want to play, but uh, at, at that critical moment where uh, this C5 was played, uh, there's no question about it. All of these pieces stranded on the queen side. We go for the attack. It doesn't matter if it works or not. Well, you know you have the f5 square for your knight at some point. That's compensation enough, and that's all Jordan needed to uh, start the attack and win this brilliancy. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, you know, if you if you analyze games and analyze lines, and then you have like the to top three engine lines, and this one is like uh, uh, 0.5 for white or 0.7 for white, and maybe this one is uh, a little bit worse, then may you know it's not all that terrible to go for that a little bit worse one as it you know could come as a surprise to your opponent we are not engines we will not be able to take advantage of an 0.5 uh, straight out of the opening uh, so yeah, uh, so, uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Adam Chaplin, Mateusz Jurjak, uh, Mike McCafferty, uh, Deepak Bhatt, and Robert Aratun for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of this spectacular event uh, until it finishes. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.